Welcome back to another video. When people come over to our house and want to see all of our vintage tape decks working, sometimes they either aren't hooked up or if they are, end up fumbling around trying to remember how to select a specific tape deck. So here's the solution we've been developing. Idea number three. that we've discussed our marketing calendar with all employees. You simply scroll over to the picture of what you want to hear and touch the button to listen to it. It's kind of fun having the most modern touchscreen technology controlling the oldest technology in the house. Hmm. And below the picture I have a little description about the tape deck and it's really simple to use. You just punch the button. So how does it work? Well, the concept is easy. You have a bunch of inputs and one output that goes to the audio receiver. This project is a mixture of hardware and software, including some switching relays, a Raspberry Pi, and some Python and React JS code. Each one of our employees, including our management staff. So, what's your favorite tape deck that you like to click the on? The Casomatic 12. I like the Casomatic 12. In this video, we're going to show you how this was built. First, the hardware. At the core of this project is the Sane Smart 16 channel relay board currently available from Amazon for about $15. It runs on 12 volts and has 16 control inputs to control each of the relays. And uh, since we have right and left channels, each device needs two of the relays, so this thing can control up to eight audio components and switch them on. When working with the Raspberry Pi and this relay board, a pack of these connectors make connections easier. And this package with over 100 wires was available from Amazon for about $6. And these can be sort of peeled off and customized, and there's a lot of variety of colors so I was able to use, you know, use some color coding. Now it'd be nice if you could just wire it up directly, but you really have limited functionality. Wrong, to make, wrong. To make this work, you've got to put a, a small resistor in here, like a 1K resistor. Disclaimer: I'm on the. Yes, yeah. This is entertainment purposes only. You know. That will blow up your house and yeah, set it on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just anyway, I had all these metal film resistors left over from a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck project, um, and and the large blue two-watt resistors are overkill, but hey. So there's really no way around you, you know, for each of the GPIO port, you're going to need, you're going to need a resistor. And, you know, I, I put some heat shrink tubing on each thing so it wouldn't uh, short out, heat it up there. So after all that, we have 16 wires used for con input control of each of the 16 relays. I have this convenient card that came with my Raspberry Pi, which helps me pick out the GPIO ports. And I don't guess it matters which one. I just used 16 of them and I kind of color coded them so I know where they were and tie wrapped them together. Anyway, in addition, the relay board, the relay board runs off 12 volts and you can hook up 5 volts back to the GPIO port to power that Raspberry Pi so you don't need a separate power supply for the Pi. Uh, again, disclaimer, I'm not an expert. I don't know what the implications are of doing this, but it's working fine for me. Of course, you hook up your uh, HDMI and your uh, keyboard and mouse and power it up and let's see if it works. And we powered it up, and everything came on just fine. It exploded the whole house. Right now, we're in the street. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, with the hardware setup complete, it was now time to work on the software. I ran a little script to activate each GPIO port in sequence that I hooked up, and then put that in an array in Python, and then reordered the array over and over again until I figured out which relay was hooked up to which port. The script I'm using is basically the heart of it is a relay service, sort of an online relay service on your local network which is really flexible because we could use that for other things. Here I've created a thing called a relay group. So like I said before, there's a left and right channel, so each device needs two relays. And I used Flask to create a web service. And so then at that point, you can go on your network and just go to a local... Uh, you can go to the IP ad address of the Raspberry Pi and the web service and tell it to turn it on and hello off. Hello world. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of a standard uh, hello world uh, app thing. To connect all the input and output components, we'll need to connect some RCA jacks to work with these relays. When I switch in a tape deck, it gets connected to the output jacks. It's that simple. Uh, let me just test it with this continuity tester. So I'll go activate that last relay and verify that it, that it goes through the relay to the left channel. There, yep, yep. All the grounds are connected together, by the way. Just the left and rights are switched, and you, that's also true with uh, standard audio components. If I activate a second group of relays, the connection goes to the other input. So it's basically simulating the whole idea of unplugging and plugging in these components. 
Now that all the behind the scenes stuff is done, the final pieces of the front end or user interface that you see on the screen. For this, I use React.js. But before we get into the details, let me just describe the experience of developing in React.js on a Raspberry Pi to somebody who's maybe a little bit more old school like me. So you may recall developing, you know, a old UI school. in Visual Studio. You just design it and you're done. Simple, right? This is kind of what it feels like working with uh, JavaScript on the Raspberry Pi, configuring all this Webpack stuff, and it just feels a lot Ow. shakier. And oh, by the way, don't forget to do your NPM install. Which will not end well. If you just Google the heck out of it, I wouldn't attempt to explain it here. If you just Google the heck out of it, you'll figure out eventually how to get it to work. Basically, it's just a React strap, a couple of cards, and uh, it's just uh, doing a map function over an array that has a list of all the components and it just calls that URL and turns them on and off. So, One other thing to mention about this, uh, you do see me using this on a phone. I did try this other little thing, which was a Raspberry Pi touchscreen case, and I think it's about $26. Uh, you can launch Chrome in kiosk mode. Of course, you can run this from any browser on your network. I, I will say that this, this does work, and it's probably usable if you wanted to leave something in place by the stereo system, but the phones and tablets just work so much better. Uh, that's really a better way to use this. Anyway, that's about it. This was a fun project, and uh, we'll see you yes. next time. Bye. See you next time. Oh, yeah. The money and the survey.